Today we celebrate the law that broke down the barriers that individuals with disabilities faced every day. National Disability Independence Day is when the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed by Congress in 1990 as the first comprehensive law that prohibits discrimination against those individuals with disabilities and guarantees that individuals with disabilities have the same opportunities as everyone else. Over the last 31 years, legislation was passed to ensure that the common barriers that individuals with disabilities face each day such as narrow doors, smaller bathroom stalls, and the lack of ramps were made more accessible. Today, because of this legislation, ramps, larger doorways, and bathroom stalls are seen in every business and facility throughout the nation. Did you know? There are several famous people and inventors who had disabilities and provided amazing and unique gifts to this world. For example, Albert Einstein had autism, struggled with dyslexia, and had trouble speaking as a child. Beethoven. He ended up losing his hearing completely, but could still produce music and complete a symphony. And Stevie Wonder. He was born blind, but became a singer, songwriter, and musician. Oftentimes, individuals with disabilities are only given recognition or sensationalized if they have some sort of impressive skill or talent especially when that skill or talent provides some sort of benefit. People who do not have disabilities see them as inspirations or someone who has overcome obstacles that they couldn't even imagine going through. And while it's important to recognize their accomplishments, it's equally, if not more important, to recognize people with disabilities as just normal people. Hi, my name is Patricia Serna and I am a recent NCC Medical Billing and Coding graduate. I have tethered cord with lipoma, which is a tumor on my spine. Essentially, I have to like cath myself every few hours. I essentially never thought I'd be able to have a career because if I was to, you know, if I didn't tell them about my condition and I was to use the restroom, they'd probably think, oh, she's just using the restroom, you know, just to be on her phone, she doesn't want to work. So that's essentially what I thought it, um, I thought employers would think of me, so I, you know, I didn't really think of having a career. Um, eventually, you know, I thought about my life and I was like, you know, I need a job. So I came into the medical field, I decided to do medical billing and coding. I recently just got hired at Las Vegas Pain Institute and Medical Center. On the interview, I told her this is my condition. She said she was willing to work with me, and you know, I told her that I have to cath myself or like change or you know do something, and she was okay with it. Accomplish what you want to accomplish. A disability isn't gonna stop it. You know, I have a disability. It didn't stop me. Celebrating people with disabilities only because they offer some sort of benefit to non-disabled people can come off as objectification. The best thing able-bodied people can do to show their support for people with disabilities is to use person-first language and simply see them as humans living their own unique lives just as everyone else is. When interacting with individuals with disabilities, it is important to use language that does not define the person by their disability. Using inclusive person-first language that acknowledges someone has a disability but recognizes it's not the only thing about them is key. Here are a few examples. Instead of saying deaf girl or disabled person, state a person who is hard of hearing or an individual with a disability. The term handicap should be replaced with people with disabilities. Using the term mental illness can be considered derogatory. Instead, you can say psychiatric disability. Instead of saying slow learner, you can say person with a learning disability. As we celebrate this law today, I want to inform you all about programs and organizations that assist and focus on individuals with special needs. Some of these organizations include Easter Seals, Opportunity Village, Best Buddies, Friendship Circle International, and the Special Olympics. I want to further discuss two of these organizations. Let's start with Best Buddies. Best Buddies was founded by Anthony Kennedy Shriver in 1989 with the intention to foster one-on-one -on -one friendships between people with and without intellectual and developmental disabilities. 
Mr. Shriver himself started the first Best Buddies chapter at Georgetown University in 1987, and since then, the program has grown exponentially. Best Buddies now has over 2,900 chapters in schools and universities across the world. I first heard of the Best Buddies program when I was in middle school. There was this little girl that used to sit by herself all the time, and I just felt horrible seeing her, like, being all alone. So I would have lunch with her and, like, walk with her and take her to her classes. I would get bullied because of that, because people thought it was just weird that I was always hanging out with someone with IDD. I just loved being around her. She was really sweet, and I didn't get to see her until I went to high school again, and she, like, remembered me as soon as I walked in into a classroom. So after that, um, the program actually recruited me and they asked me if I wanted to be part of it and I said of course and it's actually a really great program. Now let's discuss the Special Olympics. The Special Olympics all began with Eunice Kennedy Shriver, Anthony Kennedy Shriver's mother. In the 1950s and early 1960s, Ms. Shriver noticed just how unjustly individuals with intellectual disabilities were treated. So she decided to do something about it. Ms. Shriver held a summer day camp for those with intellectual disabilities in her very own backyard. The very first Special Olympics was held on July 20th, 1968 in Chicago, Illinois. We now have celebrated over 50 years of the Special Olympics, with the most recent Special Olympics event in 2019 having over 1 million participants. Throughout our state, many of our cities offer inclusion programs that provide individuals with disabilities the opportunity to fully participate in activities such as sports, camps, and classes. As a former employee at one of these amazing city programs, I had the opportunity to adapt these programs for the full inclusive experience. I started each day with reminding myself of this quote by Benjamin Franklin. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I learn, involve me and I remember. Now that we have shared a little bit about those with disabilities, we want to discuss a phenomenal movement that was established in 2009 during the Special Olympics Global Youth Activation Summit, the Spread the Word to End the Word movement. The purpose of this movement is inclusion to those with intellectual and developmental disabilities and exclusion of discrimination to these individuals. This movement was established to address a particularly powerful form of exclusion, words. Well, one word in particular, the R word, the word retard or retarded. Over the past 12 years, leaders and self-advocates have collected millions of digital and written pledges from individuals and institutions to stop the use of this heinous word. Each pledge contains a personal commitment from individuals and organizations to acknowledge the hurt caused by the R word and be inclusive and respectful of those with disabilities. And with that, it brings us great joy to share with all of you that the Diversity and Inclusion Alliance organization here at NCC has also taken the pledge to spread the word to end the word. And you can too. You can make this pledge by visiting www.spreadtheword.global and make your pledge today.